This is Life and Art. I'm Don Okoro, and I'm going to talk about what I've been up to lately. I was commissioned to paint this piece for Pleasure Venom's latest album cover. I've actually been a big fan of Pleasure Venom for years, and my art is on their previous album cover. For this latest one, Audrey, the vocalist, actually came to my studio and posed in a fur coat. The photo shoot was for me to capture some reference images of Audrey, and this was initially going to be for a, a painting I was going to do anyway but quite a bit of time had passed by and I hadn't gotten a chance to work on that piece yet. And Audrey reached out to me to see if I could use that reference image for a painting for her album cover. Throughout the process of me creating the painting, Audrey let me hear some tracks that they were working on for the album. She wanted this piece to be in gold leaf, which I've used a lot in my work before. The fur coat I think is actually like brown, but the reason why it's pink in the painting is because the color pink kept coming up when Audrey was talking to me about the album in her creative process. And the final touch was the gold across the eyes. It's called Audrey in Pink. I went to go see Pleasure Venom perform at their album release party at Hotel Vegas. There were three people on the bill. First up was Bond Breaker. Destroyer. Thank you guys. Uh, this is a single that we released. Uh, it's our latest single. It's called Behind Their Eyes. great time at the show and I'm really happy for Pleasure Venom. I went to see the work of Melvin Edward at the Christian Green Gallery at the University of Texas here in Austin. The curator, Philip Townsend, texted me inviting me to go to a screening of a documentary about the artist. So I went to go check it out and I have some information about it here. Um, the documentary was directed by Liddy Diacate. She's a film producer and director and art critic and curator for exhibitions and art programs. And more about Melvin Edwards, he was born in 1937 and he is a pioneer in the history of contemporary African-American art and sculpture. And um, he was actually born here in Texas. He was born in Houston. He spent a lot of his life living in LA and he's done a lot of work in various countries in Africa. Melvin and the director were actually at the film screening and it was awesome just to see see his process uh, on the big screen, and also just to hear him talk about his work in person. I grew up there, uh, but uh, quick biography, uh, at age seven, we moved to Dayton, Ohio, lived there for uh, five years. After attending the screening, I was actually really interested in seeing his work in person. I'm about to go into the Christian Green Gallery at the UT campus to check out Melvin Edwards' solo show. Before I went to the gallery, I was expecting to see all sculpture works, but actually uh, Philip, the curator, had brought in quite a bit of Melvin's paper art as well. And it was inter interesting to see work from various time periods and just to see how the paperwork is in dialogue with the sculptures. So Dawn, thanks for coming out, checking out the show. Melvin Edwards, Wired and Chain here at the Christian Green yeah. Gallery. 
Um, the show is Melvin's first solo exhibition in Austin, so we're really honored to have him or have the work here. Um, he visited a few weeks ago, we're really honored to bring him out. Um, basically, the underlying thesis of the show can be sort of summed up in these two works. You know, the exhibition really looks at the relationship between his sculpture, his 3D works, and works from paper. And if you look at this, you can see the objects sort of mirrored in this 2D work. So this is a thesis of the show, but what really excites me about that presentation that we were able to put together, you can find them in these three works on the wall. Here you have a three-dimensional physical tactile representation of like wire and chain, um, the bob wire and the chain that you often see in agricultural in, um, in regions. Here you have a silhouette of those materials, the so silhouette of the bob wire and the chain. And over here in this print, we have a hand-drawn articulation of those materials. So we have three ways that the artist has treated these materials that are super foundational and motifs that you see in his, year, his practice over 60 years. Um, so thanks for coming out. I hope that the works in the show really get across the message that we're trying to do, uh, capture in the work. Um, thanks for coming out. Of course, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be able to check it out. Melvin sources metal objects for his work from all over the world. And then he welds these objects together to create the sculptures. So I just left the show and it was cool to see the work in person. Prior to that, I'd only seen Melvin's work um, on, the, on his documentary and in photos, so it was Good to see the work and the materials in person and to learn more about his process from Philip. So I'm still skateboarding. Um, if you've seen some of my previous videos, um, you'll know that I started, I just started really taking it seriously this, pa this past summer. Um, I, I actually started skateboarding in, in 2020 and didn't really didn't really do it that often, but but this but last year I really um, started started taking it more seriously and wanted to to really try to get better at it. Sometimes I'll skate at the tennis court, sometimes I'll skate at a basketball court, or sometimes I'll go to a park. And what I like what I like about the parks is that they, is that they have different obstacles that you can get on. And with me being a beginner, there really isn't much that I can do other than roll on the flat ground. One thing that I've been trying is to just roll down an incline, which that doesn't look like a big deal, but for me, it's been really scary. And the higher the incline, the scarier. Just a second. But a few months ago, I started rolling down some gentle inclines, and it's actually kind of fun. Um, but for me to roll down that is like a really big deal. So the next step will be to, to roll down higher and higher inclines. And it would be great to be able to, to roll up the incline, turn around and come back down. That, that's what I really want to be able to do in the next few weeks. For me, one of the big things about skateboarding is working through fears. And so that's something that I'm constantly working on. And it's something that I have to constantly, constantly push myself on. Thank you so much for watching this. Be sure to like it and subscribe to my channel. And if there is a specific art related topic that you would like me to talk about, be sure to let me know in the comments.